sir. What? May I get your last sir? You! Yes. Oh. Oh, that's. Salud. Thank you, sir. Salud. Uh, the juice of the gods. It's very good. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's another beer, Googles. Hola. Hello. So, um, last last week. Meanwhile, at the League of Justice League. At Wayne Manor. Guy, Wayne Manor. Nice. I like it. Um, we introduced Deutschmark. So we have Checkmark, who, who is the first <laughs> character. First, per, well, first character first witness. And then we introduced Deutschmark, which used to be a German currency. And we've decided to add a third one called a Watermark, <laughs> which... <laughs> Which has been going so on the whole time. So it's not a watermark. No, it's a wooder mark. Wooder. How do you spell this? W o o d e r. Wooder. Wooder. Wooder mark. Wooder. So it's on the back of like things when you make copies. They have wooder marks on them. Wooder. So we've got a check mark, a Deutsch mark, and a wooder mark. Wooder mark. And all three have been out. Wooder mark was just not official, but you know he goes home and talks on the phone over there. Yeah, and he's on the roof, and he, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So he's that guy. He likes macaroni and gravy. Yeah, he loves macaroni and gravy over there. And he answers cheese steaks. He, he answers the phone. He answers the phone, and when he goes home, just so you know, <laughs> over there. So, so welcome everybody we, to Beer Google's fifty-two uh, point three. Watermark is from Philly. Watermark from Philly. Yeah. Yeah. And check mark from the Czech Republic. I mean, check mark is from Czech Republic, and Deutsche mark is from the Germany. Deutschmark likes to speak like this. Is he from he's, Berlin? He's a little flula. Hamburg? I believe he's from Highbrow, Germany. Highbrow. Where I is don't highbrow? know. Well, we are all Aryan, so we do not oh, know what we up. like. Okay, we're not all Aryan. We are very, very wel- welcoming peoples. Welcoming. We're very welcoming peoples. We just, we just like to have fun and drink beer. We drink beer in October only. The big steins. And then Czechmark comes in and wrecks it all. We have we have border wars. Because <laughs> Czech, Czech Republic and Germany, they border each other. They do? They, yes, they do not like each other very much. It's funny because like, Germans say welcome and Russians say welcome, yet wary. I don't get it. Anyway, so those are the three. So There's uh, some streams being crossed. <laughs> You try being inside my head, sir. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Ever. So, sir, what, what's going on today? What today are we talking about? Today we are talking about something very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> yeah. Can right. I just tell you? Yeah, I'm sure you give I'm a I'm so excited. I, I, I sh- hey, dude. I mean, poop. 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 Today we're talking about Billy. Billy Idol? Billy the Kid. Billy Corrigan? Billy oh, Shakespeare. Oh, what nice. up? Today, 14 Wait. Shakespearean phrases we still use today. No, I'm not kidding. Hold on to your shit, boy. Welcome to the beer Googles, everybody. I think we started. 14 Shakespearean phrases we still use today. We're it's fucked a- because we, we drink. We're starting to drink a lot more than we did. When so we I, I think we decided to do this because we were drunk one time. Like, hey, man, let's this talk about idea. Shakespeare and shit. Yeah, this is a great idea. And then we opened it up today and went. Uh-oh. We need to drink more before this is yeah, a Yeah, this again. might be way over our intellectual heads. Yeah, but it's um, pretty cool, though. Billy was a fucking genius, by the way. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, who wrote in iambic pentameter? Bop, ba da bop, 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 bop. Remember Danny DeVito and whatever the fuck movie that was? Renaissance Man? Bop, ba da bop, ba da bop, 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 bop. I don't even know what iambic pentameter means, dude. Uh, it's something about fifth and the it's fifth. more than quattros. It's Pent my favorite five. amendment. Penta is five. One, two, three, four, five, five. Five. <laughs> five dollar. Foot long. Okay, no subway joke, bro. No, no, bro. No joke. Not at all. None. It's not even <laughs> None, worth joking. No. no. So, um, Billy. Billy Shakespeare. Yes. What? What's he got for us? How, what do we got? So, basically what you're saying is we've got 14 things that we still use today. Correct. That Phrases. This, that this MF or what in fifteen hundreds? When was it? Four hundred years ago. Four hundred. Yes. So yeah, sixteen hundreds. Okay. Four hundred years later. That's amazing. All right, this is what happens when we drink, by the way, and look up random shit on the internet. We come up with these. Kinds uh, of and a lot of them are slang, by the way. Love it. So what's number one? Number one is to lie low. Mm. You may think you're playing it cool, says the internet. 
the cyber word webs. But this common <laughs> piece of advice comes from the bard himself, as Antonio, in much ado about nothing, suggests. If he could write himself with quarreling, some of this would be to lie low. Well, that's pretty crazy. I tell you what, just and lie low. We say lie low all the time. Yes. Please. Where it finds itself most recently is yes. Anchorman. What? Welcome to Tangents. Shut 2. the hell 15. up. It was an Anchorman? Brock, Brick, who? I, I killed a guy with a trident. Brick, I think you need to lay low. Doesn't he, doesn't he, <laughs> does he tell him to do that? I don't, he tells him to I lie don't low. remember that part. Remember when he when he remember when they had the fight between all the especial news and oh, the, the public news yes. and Tim Robbins and Ben That was ben so Stiller. amazing. That scene is so, how, we never talk about that. How come oh that scene God. didn't make our podcast, dude? How did that not, uh, We suck oh so we, hard. We suck balls. Whoa. That's awful. That scene where they just come out of everywhere. It's and spectacular. It is phenomenal. And he just holds out the grenade and he just throws a trident. I killed a guy with a trident. Speaking about that brick, I think you need to lay low. Wow. That's where that plays out. So Shakespeare, even in today's movie world, still plays out. That's a beautiful one. Wow. All right. Well, that was fun. What else about... Let's talk more about Ron Burgundy because that was... <laughs> Whale's vagina. Ah, San Diego. San Diego. That is Whale's world's vagina. vagina. Oh, Who man. knew that uh, I'm a flautist? Billy Shakespeare and Ron Burgundy were tied together so tightly? I never thought of it. No. It's another one where a dog gets hurt. But then it's okay, right? Or something after it gets thrown off the bridge or he loses Baxter. Baxter, no! I don't remember that part. I think the motorcycle guy threw Baxter. Oh, off the bridge, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. The doggy. <laughs> Oh man, we should do a Ron Burgundy one. That's a great one. God, I like lamp. I love lamp. I love lamp. Or when they start breaking out in afternoon delight. That's amazing. <laughs> What's the Panther thing? Black Panther? Oh, not Black <sighs> Panther. The Panther's vagina or whatever. No, it sixty percent of the time it, it works. works every time. <laughs> Panther stank. Sex Panther. Sex Panther. Sex it. Panther. Uh, and he's freezing. Everybody's like, what the? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, Lie Low Can you imagine the ridiculous. outtakes of that movie and how funny it must have been just to be on the set? Will Ferrell is also up there in just that creativity. Like, not how all of it's not, funny. We should have picked him as a hero of a movie. We should have because he really it. won the day. He is the anchorman. Whammo! Whammy. Is it whammy or whammo? What is that? It was a, a sports I guy. I love scotch. He's my favorite. Down in my belly. Scotch, scotch, scotch. Drink it all day. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 Hello, Baxter. Oh, my it God. It means whale's vagina. I don't think you know what that means. <laughs> it's a great fun. San Diego. And, and Christina Applegate is gorgeous in that. She makes a comeback. She's phenomenal. I always liked her even from back in the Married with Children. Kelly days. Bundy. We're on number one. Yeah, and we've now talked about five different fucking shows or and or movies related to Lilo, and they're not even connected. Somehow we'll connect them. Seven degrees. It's gonna cloud Atlas, this motherfucker. Of Billy <laughs> Shakespeare. All right, my friend. So first one again, Lilo. Yes. All right. Numero dos. Dos. Jace. And by the way, yes. Tu también, sir. Also Tambian. Also Tambian. Yes, or two Tambian. Two ta two tambourines. You, you also. Okay, thank you. All the tambourines. I feel much better now. How about this one? This one just makes me think. Go. Dirty thoughts. Ooh, hey now. Green-eyed monster. Yeah. Hey now. This phrase referring to jealousy first popped up in Othello, where envy is the main character's undoing. As Othero's frenemy, Log Iago, sagely warns, Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster with doth mock the meat it feeds on. He ended in a preposition, bro. They don't end in prepositions hey, back then. bro. On which he feeds. It's Billy Shakespeare. He can write whatever the fuck he wants, dude. Uh, I mean, right. he's the greatest playwright of all time. Yeah, I just grammar corrected William, Sh Sh William Shakespeare. Well, yeah, dude. It, it's going to be okay. So Green Eyed Monster. I don't remember using Green Eyed Monster as like a jealousy thing. I just thought about like, I'm going to whip out my Green Eyed Monster. Uh, that's my one eye. It's the one eyed monster, dude, not the Green Eyed yeah. Monster. Do you, do you use Green Eyed Monster? I feel like I don't use that one. So no, much. I, it makes me think of the Green Monster in Boston. Oh, the wall. The wall. That's the first thing I thought of because I'm a baseball psycho. Nerd. Yeah, I'm a baseball nerd for, sh for, for shizzles. Nerd. So 
uh, that's the first thing I, I don't, I, green eye monster. I don't, I may not have ever heard that term before. I, I can't say for certain. I will agree with you that that's probably one of the weaker ones on the list. It, but Lilo's so good that that this one we can skip over. So let's just fucking skip over and go to the next one. Well, we can just talk about baseball. No, yeah, let's you, talk about the Green Monster. No, how's Boston fine. doing? I have no idea. How you like them apples? <laughs> or whatever. Fuck. I got a number. Boston. I got your number. Hey, drink from the babla. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to just? Do you, would you prefer to just move along? Yeah, I'm. I'm over this already. Green eyed monster. Shh, malarkey. Well, there is. How come I get all the shitty ones? Allegedly. Oh. I'm just kidding. I'm. We're just doing every other one. It's not like we're actually. We're gonna we be no okay, idea. dude. You're only. You're gonna get seven. You're I, no. I'll get you a bag. No hyperventilating. <laughs> okay, I feel better. God, okay, we're good. Simmer down, bro. I'd like to simmer up. But there's also a, a like a classic rock song that th- there's a. He refers to a green-eyed lady. So when I first saw that, I thought of that song, too. Oh. And I don't know who sings it, and I don't know the name of the song, but it has nothing to do with this. So we're going to move along. But was she a monster? Because I probably, think a green-eyed lady would be just a lady with green eyes. Uh, yeah, but she probably was a monster. Oh, oh what? Um, uh, hello, Twitter world. <laughs> Are green-eyed ladies monsters? And shall we take care of them? Please advise below. <laughs> All right, sir. So mine was green-eyed monster. You're, you're next. Uh, next up is Heart of Gold. Ooh. Before Blondie's Heart of Glass, there was Henry V, described by supporting character Pistol as having, quote, a heart of gold, a lad of life, a imp of fame, of parents good, a fist most valiant. High praise indeed. How many times have all of us used that term before, heart of gold? Totally. A million, million times. I would bet. I would argue that almost every single person in the entire world can refer to someone as that they know of, maybe not know or friends with, but know of that they would consider having a heart of gold. Absolutely. I'm that, sure is, that's... that is one that is carried over for sure. That's an awesome one though. Heart of gold. Isn't it also like a Neil, Neil uh, Young song? Oh, well, Looking for a heart of gold. Sure. No, no, no. My heart of glass. That's I'd, the Blondie song. Yeah, I bet you. I I would bet that Heart of Gold is probably a movie too, or know, or several movies. We should probably IMDb that. We should probably do more research before we drink, or let's just drink some more. Fuck yeah, dude. That's what I'm Come on, man. Let's get this Salute. in here. Oh, thank you. Yo, you got any more of my water over here? Yo, I need some water after I drink this tequila. Tequila. Get you get you a lager, bro. Yo, get me a lager over there. It better be a Yingling, because I don't do no no other lagers. <laughs> All right. What so, a mark. Uh, heart of gold. To- totally used today. Still, that's that's an awesome one. I love it. The next one I have, yes, sir. Fair play. All's fair in love and kingdom negotiations, as Miranda in the Tempest notes. Yes. For a score of kingdoms, you should wrangle, and I would call it fair play. Fair play is always used. We talk about fair play all the time. In all the sports time. growing up. Yeah. And all that. This is where I think football comes, or baseball would come in. Yeah. Play ball, fair. What's that? Fair foul play, fair play. Foul ball. There's a guy named Jim Fairplay, I think. It was a hockey guy who hit a guy with a head with a stick. I don't so think he played so fair. That his name was ironic. It was Alanis Morissette jumped in she, she, cuz she's ah! Canadian so she can probably skate. So she she stra- can definitely skate. She's Canadian. <laughs> she's strapped on the skates, eh? And she came out she came out she came out out, out on the rink and she's like a boot. Isn't it ironic that your name's Jim Fairplay and you're in the penalty box <laughs> for 2 minutes of cross checking. Then you, you dumb get freed. Son of a bitch. <laughs> so yeah. So fair play that when that you have a thousand knives and all you need is a spork <laughs> at the Taco Bell. Oh, by the way, I, I'm still arguing that I'm getting the shitty end of this stick for some even though it's every what other. What do you mean? Cuz I looked at the next one and the next one fair looks like Fair play's oh, good. Yeah, it's bullshit. Damn, nah, dude. It ain't no lie low or our heart of gold, bro. Bro. By the way. Yes. We need to, we have shouted out to a couple people on the last podcast. Yeah. We have talked about Elias and Mr. Lex. Yeah. And we still Joe have to get Mr. Mr. Lexcon and Slider, who stinks. 
And we need to we we talked about Leas and we talked about we need to get Chris Eaton on this. Yeah. So have Eaton in my, I think Chris Eaton has a heart of gold. Doctor Eaton. Doctor PhD rocket scientist. He literally is a rocket scientist. Literally a rocket scientist whose daughter is like an amazing little goalie. And, I had to say little goalie because I don't know how big she is. So I didn't tall know. Or like, yeah, her, his daughter plays goaltending, and she's like allegedly ice phenomenal ice hockey. Well, his son plays ice hockey. He does as well, but like this alleged. I spoke with Chris a little bit, and his and his daughter just loves ice hockey, like like passion. So his son sucks. No, I just said her passion for the hockey. <laughs> the her, hockey. His son could be phenomenal. I'm not speaking of their talent. I'm speaking of their passion for it. Oh, and okay. Chris, Chris Eaton comes to mind when I think Heart of Gold because he is yeah, always generous, lot, yeah, kind, modest, yeah, great dude, smart. I mean, obviously, Gene, well, yeah, like because he works obviously. on rockets. So, Chris, Rocket Man, welcome, welcome to our podcast. Sorry that you got associated with it because when we start getting sued, we'll you'll probably be on there. All the time. <laughs> We're not going to get sued. Copyright infringement, bro. Beer Googles. Copyright infringement. W O O G. All the doubles. What's what's the next one, bro? Uh, you did fair play, right? I think I did. Good thing that because you gave me shitty ones. Look, bitch. You you told me to start. <laughs> true. I probably looked through. Oh yeah, it's true. You like, you could have started. I, no. Don't get all snooty. You're man. a guest in our house, sir. You you always get. <laughs> Hey, hey, pretty pants. Hey, hey, we listen to Eric. What's the big fucking deal, bitch? Doesn't yeah. hurt anybody. My papa, my papa. Now, can I? Are you done? Sure. Fuck. <laughs> Next is Break the Ice. That one's an awesome one. You can now Again. also blame Shakespeare for dreaded icebreaker games in The Taming of the Shrew. Tranio disguises Lucentio comments. If to be so, sir, that you are the man must stead. I cannot speak in this language anymore. I'm making this as I go up as I go along. Us all <laughs> has me amongst the rest. Blah, 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 blah. In other words, kudos to protagonist Pertuccio for breaking the ice to free up the maiden Bianca for the other suitors. Dun, dun, dun. Bianca, that's a great dog's name. I need to add that to my list. Bianca. It's also like a good mouth breast spray. Whoa! Is it what's no? What's that called? Binaka. Bi- <laughs> Binaka. <laughs> Bianca. Okay. You and I, sir. Whatever it takes. Uh, yes. M- yes, may you may. I, okay. Fuck yeah, you may. I want to. I want to. I want to speak to the Twitter verse again, if I may. Hello, Twitter world. Hello, hello, Twitter world. Do you remember the eighties when we used to carry around little breath freshener? Yeah, breath freshener is Binaka, <laughs> not Bianca. Just so you know. Well, you know. And, you know, like I said, last time we had podcast or our last episode, talk about podcast run by a 22 and a 28 year old. And I'm like, hey, in my day, we didn't have any cash of pods. So those young gentlemen that you were speaking with would not know what Banaka is. Probably not. I'm sure they might know a Bianca. Binoc- I'm sorry. Banaka on wood. <laughs> Banaka on wood. Baby, is that kind of like three times on the ceiling? If you want me, <laughs> <laughs> so break the ice is Make, fantastic. Yeah, so I believe now in hindsight, now that I'm I'm starting to pu- put the puzzle pieces together, Will Ferrell is a direct thief of Billy because Will Ferrell is in a movie called The Goods with Jeremy Piven, where he's a car used car salesman, <laughs> Jeremy Piven, and he goes, "How much does a polar bear weigh? Enough to break the ice. Nice to meet you." Oh. <laughs> It just reminds, once again, another new movie Whoa. that has Break the Ice in it. Break the Ice is used all the time. I mean, we have oh, a yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. You come to orientation and a new job, it's fucking ice. It's called an ice horse breaker. shit. Well, and that there's ships called icebreakers. That's correct. So, but that's literal, so they may be, you know, I don't think that. Well, he wrote a figurative. Right. To break the ice about, break, like, putting a wedge in there to get other people in there, I think. Yeah, well, he's talking about other suitors or something. Very interesting. Absolutely. Would you like to add to that, sir? No. Do you have an icebreaker story? Uh, the gum? Or or maybe you had a good icebreaker at one of your jobs or a fraternity icebreaker or... I, I got nothing. I got nothing either, bro. Tengo nada. <laughs> you tengo nada? Okay. 
My turn? Yes, for Finally, go. I get a fucking decent one. God, shut up, you once. whiny bitch. I am a whiny little bit. You know what? I don't think you can be whiny yes, if you have I, a deep voice like this. Yeah. Uh, can you be whiny if you have a deep voice like uh, this? Do you have sand in your vagina? Mm. Um, always. <laughs> Is there any other way to have a vagina? I don't know. <laughs> yes? How about not having one? I just oh. don't have, I don't think I have one, but maybe I do something. I'm not going to uh, go. But I am what I eat. Um, wild goose chase, sir. Wild goose chase. I so love look at that. You got a good one. I got a good one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Inspired by the erratic flying patterns of the bird, a goose chase was a game where riders trained their horses to conduct a series of difficult maneuvers. It sounds like dressage to me. <laughs> which others had to copy. Oh, it's a game of horse with a horse. Oh, my God. Holy shit. They came up with the game of horse also. This is allegedly. way before basketball was invented. Totally. Sort of like a game of horse. Oh, my God. It actually says it on there. I didn't even read that before. That is so Whoa. weird. But with actual horses. That's Isn't funny. It ironic? Don't you think? Yeah, dude. If I need a fucking knife and I got ten thousand spoons, there's zero irony. It's just shitty fucking circumstance. It's like rain on a rainy day. That sounds redundant, not <laughs> ironic. Thank you for calling the uh, ironically uh, redundantly <laughs> redundant department. <laughs> this is Steve Stevens. How may I assist you? And you thought we couldn't stretch this to a fucking hour? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding hey, dude, me? Hey, dude, don't reveal all my secrets, oh, shit. bro. All our secrets. Yeah, we're, guys, we're just, we love you, and we just <laughs> want to fuck around. So we're in a wild goose chase. So in Romeo and Juliet, Mercutio mentions, nay, if our wits run the wild goose chase, I am done. Anyway, so wild goose chase is an awesome one. We always say it. You always put on a wild goose chase. And I never knew the origins, and it's so cool to hear that, like, fucking William Shakespeare comes up with a phrase that we use in, in very regularly. I use it this week. I'm on a wild goose chase trying to find a bowl, a light bulb to screw into one of the outlets in the house I'm selling. Isn't that weird? It's so crazy wild, that, wild that, that that wild goose chase is 400 years old. Yeah. that's. I mean, just think about think about what's happened in... On this planet in the last 400 years. Almost double the, the length of America. Yeah, double the length of America. That phrase has been around for generations and generations and countries and wars and the technology, the, the numbers of events that have happened on this planet. And that phrase has been around. All English speaking countries. Yeah. Yeah know of this i don't think this is a phrase that escapes like sometimes when you translate it's one that just seems universal i think it's 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 crazy it's amazing psycho so with that one in mind yours your next one's really fucking good too I mean, me, 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 me. <sighs> well of course it's mine dude because my dad is in it he is well yeah if you oh i see so well and your middle name's in it bro it's my first name Sorry, your first name's in it. Yeah, I go by I go by my middle name. I I've known you twenty eight years, and I don't know this. Yeah, Christopher's um, my middle name. We're gonna have a new co host uh, starting next week, bro. Because I think I just fired myself. Because you didn't I know, know my that. you didn't know my. I thought you were Christopher Cesar. Negative, sir. Cesar Cristobal. Do you have any idea how honestly like shameful I feel right now? No, I feel but very, it's not I a common thing. Shame. You don't go around. You know, what I mean, that's not it's not, a, it's not a big deal. I still feel shame. It's, it's okay. It's good. Hey, hey, look at me. Look, it's going to be okay. Thank you for loving me, for being loving my eyes. Loving you. When I couldn't see. It's I'm doing by a Joey, bro. because you got a face for podcasting. Yeah, well. Do, 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 by the do, way, do, ladies do. and gentlemen, we have. We have ah, ah, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have yeah. taken the video I'm aspect the worst off of I'm singer, our, bro. Even though. He, Okay, so Christopher, even though he's a handsome fucking devil, um, I took the video off. I I made a personal decision because I have a face for radio and Twitter. And now podcasting. you're a good looking dude, dude. Thanks, bro. But I'm I'm cool with that. I'd rather be a good looking voice than a good looking dude. You got both because because anybody who listens to us can be like, just imagine what he looks like. Yeah, and then they look and they go, Ooh. he's sexy. Yeah, we've he had knows that happen. It. So what's the, what's the next? The one, next sir? one, sir. Yeah, it's all Greek to me. I love this phrase. Yeah. I love it.
love it. It's fantastical. It is. So what, what's it about? Not sure what's going on. Apparently, neither did Roman Casca in Julius Caesar when he said, but those that understood him smiled at one another and shook their heads. But for my own part, it was Greek to me. What do you like about that phrase, man? Do you use it a lot? Do you use it? Do you find yourself um, I like everything about it. I do I do use it. I, I, I don't think frequently. I would say four times a year. But uh, I think I'm I get as perplexed as the next person. I you know, I get confused all the time. So there's when I first walked into this room and you showed me all your podcast stuff, I was like, it's all Greek to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I like your soundboard. Uh, Thanks, man. I have no idea how any of that shit works. <laughs> Guess what? Neither do I. I like, have you heard, have you listened to the podcast? Yes. Neither fantastic. I. I have no idea. I just, then you, then, then the one time when I'm like, isn't that button supposed to be red? Oh, horse shit. Yeah. Seven minutes in bro. <laughs> and did you, do you know how I fucking edited that shit? That was such a bitch. To I'm do. so sorry. That was my fault. I'm oh, he's raising his hand. You can't Foul, see raising my shit. hand. I think we should have another sh- shot yeah, though, okay, before dude. we, hold on. Salute. Yes. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, we should slow it down, bro. Um, I'm sorry, you're telling me. So it's all me Greek to me. We should so, slow it down. I asked you about it's all Greek to me. You know why I asked you Please. it's all Greek to me? Because to your point, when you walked in and saw the equipment, which I can build computers, but I can't fucking do the software stuff. Right? I can I can physically make the stuff. I can put all connect all the wires and so this all seems like whatever, but it like the soundboard and the cables and the and the uh, cloud lifter filter and all this shit blah 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 blah. I can do all that shit, but I can't figure that shit out. And I'm pointing at the goddamn computer. <laughs> and social media is such a huge part of this, and I it's all fucking Greek to me. I've been it's been Greek. I've been speaking Greek, trying to pick up on Greek for about a month and a half now. No, a month. We're just over a month, right? Dude, we launched July second. We need Greek Mark. Greek Mark. Uh, as, uh, you, Windex, as your Windex as your, your, as your oh, forehead my gets squishy, furrowed. <laughs> I furrow my brow. Squishy forehead. I, I I furrowed my brow, ladies and gentlemen. But no, like that is all Greek to me. The social media world. Well, yeah, because we're Facebook. not twenty two, bro. I'm trying to understand. People communicate in, in. I don't know if they're gifs or gifs. I say gif because it's graphic. Isn't it graphic interface something or graphic something? you think something? I fucking know. Anyway, GIF. GIF, GIF, same fucking thing. Anyway. GIFs. I, it's all Greek to me, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I'm tweet, I tweet something and I'm like, oh, I screwed that up. You can't delete it. You can't? You can't edit it. You can only delete it. So you, when you typo with my fat thumbs, which happens every tweet. Should you put that in a notepad and then paste it into the tweeter? Yeah. Yeah, or I should just read it before proofread like eighteen thousand times well, instead of seventeen thousand nine hundred ninety nine times. Put it in a notepad, dude. Yeah. So I, but I'm sometimes on my phone, and it's just weird. On to your do what? My phone. Well, watermark puts it on my phone over there. Okay. Anyway, so dude, that would be a great Twitter handle. At watermark. watermark. Well, that's true. It'd be a great, we should actually create at checkmark at watermark and at deutschmark. You should. Um, maybe we'll do that. Deutschmark at gmail dot com. <laughs> That'd be great. Anyway, so like we get on this Twitter stuff and I'm tweeting like crazy and people are calling me bots and all this stuff because I'm like tweeting something that I kind of tweet to everybody. Kind of. But like I try to make it personalized. I just have no clue what we're doing. We're starting at zero. We're nobody's bro. We're, got, we're almost at a thousand yourself, downloads. man. We're almost at a thousand downloads don't, don't, as of. I'm not a nobody. As of August 8th. We were, at, we were almost at a thousand downloads. I would never have guessed that to happen in a month and a week. A month and a week. So thank you, sir, Salute. for all your help, first of all. And that was the biggest tangent I think we've ever done about. Not uh, even close to the biggest Greek tangent, to dude. So social media, Greek to me. Uh, podcasting equipment, Greek to Chris. Well, there's a lot of things that are Greek to all of us. I don't oh, think yeah. that's that's true with, you know, when you start a new job, you're like, um, how do, how do I log into this system? How do I log into that system? Hey, boss, how do I ask for a day off? How do I, it's, I mean, that's true with everything in life. Like a new parent, uh, oh, the baby's teething. Okay. I mean, everything. It's all new. All, all of life is life Greek, is dude. New. Yeah, it You is. know what I mean? Like 
when you're seven and you get a skateboard, you're like, screw it. I get on, I fall off. I get back up, I get back on. It's, that's that's what Riding every part of life is, dude. How Greek was a fucking bicycle? God, it was terrifying. When those training wheels came off. That shakiness, trying yep. to get enough speed to keep it to go just straight. Oh, or but then when straight, you figured it out, it dude. Upright. Yeah. Man. Amazing. Oh, then end of the, oh, for us kids growing up with bicycles was like our thing. Oh, that was freedom for us. Well, yeah, but when those... Tra- we didn't have a place to escape. Like, we didn't have, like, a YouTube to escape in another world. We had to make our own world. We literally we, escaped, like, to the other leave. street mm-hmm. so that you couldn't see your own house. It's quite amazing. That's absolutely correct. So, it's a crazy thing. I can't absolutely. believe that happened. Yeah. Anyway, um, so it's Greek to me. What I find interesting about that phrase, yes. before we put a pin in it, is Latin lasted longer than Greek. Huh. Because Rome... No one says it's Latin to me because Latin is now a dead language. Oh, very. Well, it tells yeah. you how powerful, once again, William Shakespeare was in his presence. Yeah, why didn't he say it's all Latin to me? Because I think they spoke Latin in the Middle Ages. I well, would is that because of the church? I would think Latin lasted, Latin didn't die until probably 18, 1900s, well, probably, as um, a whole. As, a, as an actual spoken whatever language. Because well, it was big in medical journals. But the Catholic or, Church. Masses were in Latin until 1960. Right, that's because yeah. of Vatican II. Right, for sure. So it, yeah, obviously it makes sense. The Latin would be because it's in Rome, but it's funny that he chose. Well, then it was live, so Greek must have been the dead language that he chose, and that's the one that stuck as the phrase because no one says it's Latin to me. Right, you know what I mean? It's just in today's world, so maybe we should update it because it's all Latin to me. Too. What would it be now? Latin, because okay. it's the last dead language that I know of, not Sanskrit. Sanskrit. You You're majoring in a 5,000-year-old dead language. No, that's it. Get out. Just get out. <laughs> that's a shout-out to Nate Levesque. Yeah. Another Gamma Oda brother. Mr. Nate Levesque, I hope you're listening to this, but I just PC'd you, my, my friend. <laughs> and Jeremy Piven as well. How about that? Love Sanskrit. that guy. Love that guy, too. All right, my friend. My turn? C. My phrase is forever and a day. This phrase is an emphatic declaration of how long Orlando would love Rosalind in As You Like It. Although it was originally used in The Taming of the Shrew, published four years earlier, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. I did not. To bid the character of Bianca, not, another Bianca. Not. Not Banaka. Not Banaka. Not. The thing in Dumb and Dumber. That was Banaka. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, my God. I love that. An exception. Long farewell. Anyway, forever in a day. And I will love you always. That was mine. That was my uh, John Bon Jovi. I thought it was pretty good. It was fantastic. I'll be there forever and a day. Bow, 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 bow. Is that? Right? Yeah. That's, is that the name of the song? No, it's all. It's called Always. Oh. I will love you all, baby, always. I'll be there forever and a day. John Bon Jovi stole William Shakespeare's shit. Will Ferrell, John Bon Jovi, thieves. Imagine thieves. Carlos is is rolling around his grave. He's not even dead yet, and going, "Why am I getting singled out for stealing who's shit?" Car- who's Carlos? Carlos Menstila. Oh, thank you. Do you think that? <laughs> Sorry. Do you think that I'm if sure if William Shakespeare himself. was a artist, he would his album would have been called Slippery When Wet? Possibly. Did he give? I don't know. Did he? Is, his, is, 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 is that on love, the list? Hold on. Is a his second. love like bad medicine? Um, well, I can tell you that he's wanted dead or alive. <laughs> <laughs> wanted. Because we still wanted. want him and he, we know he's dead. Dead or alive. Um, Richie Sambora Shakespeare. Called the Young Guns, bro. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, yeah. So, we these these phrases are really. They're Evident used in, by Bon Jovi. By Bon freaking Jovi of all people. Wow. That's pretty impressive. So uh, this one is also another song. Time of your life. By this guy that sounds like he's got some nasal issues, needs a tissue. <laughs> Wake me up when September ends. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, I'm know. sorry. I, is that a spoiler alert? Did I, I know exactly it? who. You're... I know, but did I spoil it because oh. of the phrase? Did you... 
It's something unpredictable. In the end is right. I hope you have the time of your life. Is that your phrase? Is that the name of the song? Yeah. Oh, okay. In the parentheses, I- it's time of your life, but it's actually called Go. Good riddance. Yes, sir. Not just a Green Day song. Ta da! I didn't even look at that, ladies and gentlemen. I just knew. The word riddance was used in the 16th century to describe getting rid of something, a good riddance, as spoken by Portia in Merchant of Venice, refers to happily eliminating something from your life, or as the play, someone like Prince of Morocco. Well done. I like that term, too. Good riddance to bad rubbish. I think they added the bad rubbish part. I wonder if that was a Shakespeare thing, too. I think that was a great, great acapella number you did, sir. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I do a very good Billy Billy Joe. I've never noticed the nasal thing before. Yeah. I thought you were trying to do vocal fry or something. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever watched uh, How I Met Your Mother? Was that a show that you watched? Oh, I watched every fucking. Okay. I watched. I rewatched the entire series, Thank all you. nine seasons. Do you remember the glass shattering? When you point out the one thing that somebody does and all you see is their idiosyncrasy. Do you remember that episode at all? So you'd be like, Lily does this every time she gets out of the shower or something. And it's like, Shh. you remember that one? I, I, this, I am the king of breaking everyone's fucking spirit about things. So like you give me like Billy, I love Green Day. And I'd be like, he sounds like he's nasally all the time. <laughs> and... <laughs> And, and now, now that, all you hear is that. Thank God I'm not a Green Day fan. So I'm a glass. I'm a glass shatter. I'm the one who breaks the mold. Like I have idiosyncrasies, obviously too. No, you do, do not. I have like five thousand of them. No, it's like thirty four hundred, <laughs> give or take. Don't like exaggerate, okay? But that's the truth. It's good riddance, and I remember good riddance. That's a, that's an awesome. It's so a great good thing for riddance like, to Green Day. The green Day likes it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, you're gonna hear his nasal. What was their super popular song that the first one that came out? Wake me up and close my eyes, take me away to paradise. I saw that boy go and blind, and I smell like shit. It's totally what's Billy the Joe. name of that song? Uh, Longview. Ba-dum, dum, dum, no, ba-dum, what's the first dum, one? It was real. Heavy. That was the one where he, yeah, dun, 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 when they were in the close my eyes. It's about. No, when they were in the insane asylum. Oh, dude, they're, I don't okay. know. Okay, bro. I you don't know what's know. awesome about podcasts? What's that? No one can see you playing air guitar. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. I feel like. I was like, dude, um, uh, <laughs> check mark. You're playing air guitar, dude. No I one can feel, see you. Yes, but I feel like I have to do. I have to like play this to, in order to do Billy Joel very well. You know, very well. I'm so very sad well. for check mark because Green Day doesn't come out in your country for four more years. Yes, we. Green Day. What is this? I, green I heard day? of Gang Green. <laughs> that is what we get when you get shot in foot with yeah. with uh, Russian rifle. Because it's Russian rifle. Even though we are in Czech Czech Republic, we still have Russian shite. Republic. And and Deutschmark is like, what is this? What is this Russian shite rough rifle? Why why do you have this Russian shite? I don't understand. <laughs> 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 okay, we need to shut this shit down, man. This, Why? Because, like, how many fucking different personalities are going to come out? What am I, the United States of fucking Tara over here? Jesus. You're uh, you're the United Nations, sir. Um, please. Please, no. All right, good riddance. Yes. Not good just riddance. a Green Day song. Good riddance, go. Good riddance to good riddance. My next phrase, sir? Yes. Oh, dude, we got, we're 40 minutes in, bro. We are so good. And people are still listening. I guarantee. Are you guys listening? I know you are. Hey, it's a Queensryche song. Is anyone listening? listening? Is anybody out there? Anyway, what are you shaving with your with, I'm the, with the microphone? My, I'm itching, itching my. That was in Kentucky Fried Movie where the thing became a razor and it was like, <laughs> and then went underwater and was a. Blah, blah, blah. Was Kentucky Fried Movie. That's a movie that should have taken on the island. By the way, no. This phrase comes to you from Billy. Also, William, William, Liam, hello, Liam. Give us the other next one. Uh, kill with kindness. That's right, kill with kindness. 
Modern musicians have found great inspiration in Shakespeare's turn of phrase. Before Selena Gomez Ugh. crooned about killing him with kindness, so did Petruchio when describing his tactics to win over the pricky Catherine with a dollop of quote unquote headstrong humor in Taming of the Shrew. I love that phrase though. What is t- what is Taming of the Shrew? I mean, I know it's a play, but oh. what does that mean? What's what is that? I. Th- what is the shrew? What's a shrew? I really don't know the, the. I think it's the woman. Oh, so she's a shrew. I think. Okay, um, I do not know William Shakespeare well at all. Okay, we we were drinking when we came up with this. Concept, we're still so drinking. I know, but <laughs> but but we were really drinking. <laughs> but we were really drinking. Oh, so excessively more drinking than usual. Well, we were dr- okay. Right now, we're still drinking. Yeah. Last time when we found this thing, we were, we were drunk. Yeah. So I know. I know. I know. It's okay. It's, it's gonna okay. It's going to be okay. But kill him with kindness. So uh, Tame Me the Shrew, I think, is about a woman who is prickly and kind of cold. I think that's oh, what they're talking that? about. Okay. And then she's the quote unquote shrew. And I guess shrew is an old term. So for are like they talking? Bitch. They're saying Selena Gomez is a shrew? No. Selena Gomez sang a song about killing with kindness. She just. That's all she's saying. Do you like Selena Gomez? I think she's attractive. I get her and the other chick confused. Let's move along. They, all of them. The the Swizz and... No. The other brunette. Ar- Ariana Grande. Oh, Grande I get them a little, little mousy girl. Uh, Selena is the one who had the kidney replacement. Which she is had a... Wow, I, had, yeah. I don't... Honestly... Pretty inspirational. I didn't know about it until after the actual operate, like till it was like done. I think it was hidden for like all that time. Like it was pretty soldiery of her to not pretty soldiery. Like, well, like to not like use that to get things. I think you know what I mean. Like what was me? Like people. Oh. I think it's cool. Like, I don't think anyone knew. So she killed him with kindness. She killed him with kindness. No, but killing with kindness is always a great thing. Like how about yeah. don't be a dick. That's what he should have said. Right. Don't be a dick. <laughs> I think that's number fifteen. Okay, it's not on the it bare, almost made the list. <laughs> it almost made the list. It made Which it made play Woodsy's was that list. in? Um Merchant cats. of Cats. <laughs> Rent? I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't think Billy wrote Cats. Uh Good Night Saigon? Yes. <laughs> Rent. He wrote Rent. Everyone has AIDS. Lease. AIDS, AIDS, AIDS. AIDS, 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 Team America. That was South Park. Yeah, I Fuck know. Yeah. yeah, I know. That's what. But no, it was on lease. Remember, it was on. It was in Team America. Yeah, it wasn't South Park. I know, bro. AIDS. <laughs> oh well, Jared had AIDS too. I know, but that's different. That I don't was talk. So funny. Well, Jared is not. On, he's on my shit list. I don't need it Subway because of that fucker. But it's not Subway's fault technically. But I think they knew about it. Also, you think they did? No, I don't think so. I'm totally bullshitting. I'm not slandering. You think anyone. there was a Subway cover up? A sub up, <laughs> a sub up, a sub up. Um, I don't think there was. I'll be honest, because we talked about that. Like, because we're going to talk about some stuff later, but it's going to be before this one's released, so we shouldn't talk about it. Okay. But but Jared, yeah, I don't think I don't think Subway knew about it. And it, God, if they did, never. Like, I'm that's worth canceling for me. I, first of all, they're not great to begin with, but like, if that's they the knew worst about, sandwich place, dude. Yeah, it, it stinks. Is, it is the worst. It literally smells. It does. You walk when you in, walk in like, whatever Ew. that thing is that they're baking. I won't even call it. It's gross. Bread. Why would you go bread. there when you can go to other places that are way better? You mean like anywhere else? Almost? Anywhere else? Almost anywhere. Like else. your own kitchen. Make your own <laughs> fucking sandwich. Oh man, it's so true. And I did. I guess Subway's not going to be endorsing us anytime soon. Oh, We're not going to have a We probably should episode. not. We shouldn't burn. be burning bridges. Yeah. Let me put, let me put this flamethrower away. Yeah. Excuse seriously. Me. Uh, Firehouse subs can reach out, uh, bro. I'm okay with that. Rocket launcher. Yeah. Uzi 9 millimeter. <laughs> so killing with not kindness. That was the whole thing. Is that like. I think I just did not kill anyone with kindness just now. Well, right Especially now we wouldn't. Subway. No, right now we wouldn't. But you know, the truth is, it is always a good plan. If you hate somebody, just extra smile. Because that That's actually so angers hard. them that they're not angering you. It's so hard, dude. I know. It is sometimes. But if you got the philosophy of like, you know what? This is awesome, and if anything, you're going to piss them off more because you're not getting angry because they're trying to get you to be angry. What That's I, my feel. What I do is I try to answer in the least amount of words possible. Like, if you ask me... Succinctness. If you ask me a yes or no question, you can't see me shaking my head right now. 
Uh, oh, sorry. Chris is shaking his head. Like, that's there. a bad idea. You asked me a yes, no question. I, I'm going to answer it you know, with the yes or no. <laughs> I'm sorry that that's not my fault. That is that you, a Virgo thing or is that a No, that's uh, uh, that's me trying to get out of a situation that I don't want to be in. That's I because yeah. I, I want to be helpful. But if you're a dick, I'm not I, I, I don't want to deal with you. Sorry. Yeah. And instead, I, because killing with kindness to someone that's a dick, I don't, I, I don't want to do it. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. You know what we, and, and some part of why we launched this whole thing, like why we're doing this. Yeah. We have a fucking fun side. This is our fun side. We fuck around. We make really bad, inappropriate jokes. It's all, it's intent as humor all the time. Oh, we're yeah, not yeah. trying to be mean. No. But like the reason we're doing this because we do struggle. We realize we struggle with something like killing with kindness. It's oh, hard. Yeah. That's why I just said what I said. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like that's what I love about what you, what you bring to the table for me is like how open you are about your, I don't want, I don't want to say shortcomings, but the well, challenges that you work on constantly in your life. But isn't you know, that true really with awesome. every human being? No, I think. I think that everyone should do that. I don't feel like everyone is doing that right now. We're happy to blame someone else for our, oh. our shortcomings or whatever. We are we are ones who want to take accountability for when we screw up. I guarantee we'll say some crazy shit. <coughs> we'll say some crazy shit. But the intent is really humor. It's never to hurt anyone. But no, we learn correct. from it. We, we haven't used the R word in a while. We haven't used this, that, and the other. We're pretty good. I just told a friend of mine in the last couple of days that I want to be a better human being tomorrow than I am today. And I want to be a better human being the next day after that. And I, I, th and I said, everybody wants to be that way. And she said, no, they don't. Not, not everyone thinks like you, Chris. Not everyone, not everyone does that. And I, and sadly she's right. Not everyone has that conscious thought. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. Not everybody, you know, and obviously trying to be a better human being tomorrow is, is it's not always successful. Tomorrow I might have a rough day. I don't you know. Might revert. Yeah, I might Absolutely. have a I might have a hard day. I might cut somebody off, and I might go, man. I'm, I'm I, hey, I give them a wave and go, hey, I'm really sorry. I was whatever distracted, or I was in a hurry, or I missed the turn, or whatever. That's just a, one wants, example. Yeah. Or I'll you know I, whatever. But I'm, my intent is to always to try to be a better human being going forward, and I think we should all. We should all do that. But yeah. of course, no one's perfect. And I totally get that. And the killing with kindness is like a little extra because it's like being extra nice, almost condescendingly nice in a way is kind of how we take it now. You know what I mean? Yes, of course. You're like extra nice because you're extra dicky. <laughs> but I think we should just be kind. Yeah. Let's do that. And I love that. You know, better better tomorrow than today. Better the next day than the day after or the day before. Those are beautiful things, man. And, and what's funny is I... I hate to argue with your friend, and I, I agree with your friend about the concept, but I think everyone wants that, but they don't want to work to make that happen. And I think doing that takes a lot of effort, and that's why it's not done. Just my just my two cents. I, I, I believe you're correct. But if this isn't a KC episode, maybe we can make that a KC episode. Sure. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'll, but to put to wrap that, to put a bow tie on it, uh, <laughs> ding. I think a lot of people don't even have that thought about being a better person tomorrow. Yeah. And that's all I had to say about and that. And some people don't have the capability to, if they're right. so distracted with what their life is so chaotic or mm -hmm. hectic. And mm -hmm. yeah, we all create a little bit of our life, but sometimes things happen to us too. And I, you know, I'm not to be sen insensitive to anything that's being done, but at the same point, like it's tough sometimes. So we, you know, put ourselves in their shoes and understand that, you know, someone working three jobs yeah. Full time jobs is not going to have the patience of someone who, you know, they're trying, they're just trying to get through the day like, and survive. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm like that some days, and I get that. Yeah. So, anyway, let's move so on. So, without a little serious note, the next Sweet one is note. a fun one, yeah. but I, I like your the one after this one for you Ugh. is like my favorite one. Disgusting. Go, Go ahead. ahead. No, it's your turn. It's my turn. Yeah. I thought I just did uh, oh, yeah. Kill My Kindness, bro. Come on, man. I still love you, bro. I know. As I good I luck would have it. I know you prick. We've since dropped the good, but this idiom about a serendipitous event comes from the Merry Wives of Windsor when a Falstaff mentions meeting Mistress Page and gaining some useful information. Ooh. As good luck would have it. And now we say as luck would have it, right? Yes. 
So it because, is the same thing. Yeah, because luck is always good. Luck is never bad. Well, bad luck. <laughs> Man, I'm stupid. Wow. Uh, please like, uh, disregard the previous comment. So, hello, Twitter world. <laughs> hello, Twitter world. I just gave Chris the biggest stare while he was yeah, digging I himself got, a hole. Like, holy reel it back, shit. reel it back, reel uh, it back. Here's the he shovel, fucker. Back. Yeah. He fucking took a jackhammer to that. And <laughs> just <laughs> uh, there's <laughs> poop in the podcast. Oh, my gosh. It's like a fly in the ointment. Who the fuck came up with that one? We were going to do that one. Like, keep your shirt on, fly in the ointment. We, we're going to have to do another a one. A completely different poet. Totally. <laughs> All together. And he didn't know it. Whoa. Whoa. It was Joey well, Lawrence. It was Joey. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, hey, here you go, dude. Uh, the 14 dumbest phrases from Joey Lawrence. <laughs> whoa, 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 and keep your shirt on. <laughs> keep your shirt on. Oh, beautiful, man. So what What else would you like to say about uh, as luck would have it? We do say that still. We as do, luck would yeah. have it. Yeah, we do uh, We do use that frequently. Yeah. Well, sometimes you say more like a what a coincidence now or coincidentally. Yeah. It's like we change a little bit, but it's still there. It's still prevalent. But coincidence aren't, don't exist. Well, it is, they do because they're coincident. They just happen to happen at the same time. We mean... Something different when we say coincidence, we mean like it's random. But coincidence actually just means two incidents happening coterminously or at the same time. Or at the same time, right? Coincidence. Why don't we we say coterminously? Well, I think terminously is like the end of something because it's terminate. I use the incorrect word, but it's coincidence. So it's two incidents at the same time. That's not necessarily random. People just assign randomness to that now when they say, oh, it's a coincidence. Because they don't say it's a coincidence. Wow, two things happen at the same time. Okay, uh, here, sir. Hold on. <clears throat> Take the soapbox back. I'm done. Okay, next phrase. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, I, you're up, bro. Love is blind. Oh, we we do use this one. Chaucer coined it back in 1405. Mfers. What is it? 2026. So that's six. It's 2020. 2020. It's. That's 615 years ago. What happened to 400 years ago? Well, that's Shakespeare lived 400 years ago. Well, Ch- Chaucer lived 600 uh, years ago. Oh, okay. But Shakespeare popularized a phrase in Merchant of Venice. Got it. Got it. So it actually started with Ch- Chaucer, Jeffrey Chaucer from Knight's Tale. Whoa. 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 Callback. Whoa. Whoa. Now we're doing that way <laughs> too much. Oh my gosh. We need that on there. Yeah. Um, I'll do a personal one so it won't be him. So we could probably get away with it. We will get away with it. Okay, cool. Well, love is blind. That's a totally awesome phrase. Like, are, are you going to say the quote? Love is blind. Bro. Oh, but love is blind and lovers cannot see the pretty follies that they themselves commit. We didn't, we just talk about that. Like well, we don't see our own fallibilities or something, or are we just kind of do you, but I think the context of that sentence and the way we use it today might be different different i kind of see that the way it reads yeah totally lovers cannot see the pretty follies that they themselves commit right basically i think it's like when they're both together they both act as one so they don't see the issues versus nowadays we say love is blind like you have a problem or problem that's a stupid way to say but you have something with you and i choose to ignore it or I don't see it because I love you. I think they are two different. I think they're meant a little differently than they are nowadays, but the phrase is still there. So sometimes things mean, I mean, meanings change language. Correct. Changes. It's, it's kind of metamorphosized over the years. Yeah. I feel like that one definitely because has now that you mentioned the it. modern, you know, the, in the, the 21st century, the modern meeting might be changed slightly. I think it is. I think it is like, Oh, well you don't, Pick up the you don't take out the trash, but I love you anyway, so I don't see that as a fallibility of you because of my love for you. This seems a little different. You're right; it's a good point. So it's same phrase, but I think it's used differently now. And now on to my favorite, because it really is my favorite of all of them. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, but I don't have a drum roll. I'm sorry. The game is afoot. The game is afoot. The game is not a toe or an arm. The game is a foot. 
Speaking of famous misattributions, Shakespeare originated Sherlock Holmes' most famous catchphrase, not Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It pops up in Henry V, spoken by the king himself as part of a motivational battle speech. What are your thoughts on that, man? I prefer the version from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. <laughs> Strange things. I are mean, it's afoot. slightly different, but no, I mean, afoot, though. It's Strange the things part. are afoot <laughs> at the at Circle the K. K. <laughs> <laughs> we have Bill and Tedded like a handful of these now because it's amazing. Well, because Keanu Reeves and John Wick, that's why. And you know, Beef Oven and Socrates. And the guy, the the other guy. Rufus? Bill? No, who's the blonde-haired kid? Which one's that, Ted? Which one's Theodore Logan? That's I Keanu. I don't fucking know. Okay, well, whichever one's not not Keanu. Alex is, Winter. Is the one who's hanging upside down in Lost Boys and gets stabbed in yes. the cave. Yes, Alex Winter. Down with, with the With the Corys. The two Corys. The, both the Corys. And the Jamie Gertz. Yes. In her youth. Oh, Jamie Gertz. No she way was, out, Jamie Gertz. She was with awesome. Rob, in, with it, Rob, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Um, and Andy McDowell. Less than zero. And, that's what I'm saying. Less than zero. With, <gasps> Ro- with that was Robert Downey Jr. Movie, dude. And if you... Time out. Yes, sir. Time out. Hold on. Hold on. Uh-oh. All right. All right. We need... This is a huge tangent. Everybody. Okay. Go. Less than zero is probably the best movie ever made. I am going on a limb. It's, I know it's not on my island movies, but why not? I don't know why. Now that I think about it, because every time I think about Less Than Zero in yeah. any way, yeah, it's so raw, like about abuse, and it's like James Spader, yeah, Robert Downey Jr., Jamie Gertz, Andrew McCarthy, like just heavy hitters in the eighties, huge heavy hitters, and what Robert Downey Jr. went through in that movie was just disturbing. And it was so real. Yeah. He almost lived that in his real yeah, life later. He did. And he resurrected with Iron Man. I think Iron yeah. Man is what saved his life. I mean, in a weird way, was, like well, Iron Man yeah. almost saved his life. Yeah. Um, that movie, if that wasn't life imitating art, I don't know what is. That was such a, oh my God, it's such a crazy movie. I watched it again in last year. It's so good. I'm going to watch it again tonight. Still so good tonight. to this day. And yeah, holds up. Yeah. Holds up. Yeah, like the, the music, the party scene, L.A., Palm Springs, drugs, sex, horrible drugs and rock sex and roll. stuff. Yeah, you know, such a great movie. And I, the addiction is just disturbing, man. Breaks your heart. It really does. But, like, I but, cried, like, big time at the end of that. It was, like, and I don't want to, I'm not spoiling it, but well, it, it was a sad, it's a sad movie. Yeah, sad movie. yeah. But it meant something. It actually shook me kind of awake in a weird way when I watched it. I'm going to watch Chronicles of Riddick, and you can watch fucking Less Than Zero. Okay. But um, the game's afoot. I mean, we haven't even talked about Shakespeare. Arthur Conan Doyle, I didn't know he took it or used it, retread uh, it. I guess I didn't even think about the the the, the Sherlock Holmes connection. I didn't even... Because I never was a, a, a Sherlock Holmes fan until... Cumberbatch. Until the Robert Downey Jr. movie oh, yeah. came out. Well, he did afoot, but the yes. Cumberbatch version I never, says the game is on. Oh. And if you haven't watched that, I haven't. Go on Netflix. All the Shakespeare's are on there. They look like series, but it's really like mini movies. It's like there's like five seasons, but it's basically like five movies, like hour and a half long. They are phenomenal. Moriarty is phenomenal. Did you ever watch Black Mirror? Not all of it. I, I watched a couple episodes, okay. and I just didn't. You either get it or don't. It's I, one of those. Yeah, it's really I, I, one everyone's of those. keeps saying how great it is. I shanked just... it for you, man. I'm sorry. Well. I started watching the wrong season first, and mm. I was like... You have to start at the beginning, because they get more deep later in like their involvement, and you kind of have to watch those to kind of dip your toe into like the world that they're starting. But anyway, Moriarty <laughs> plays a character in one of the Black Mirror episodes. Who's Moriarty? He's the bad guy in Shakespeare. No shit. But Who he's, plays Moriarty? I don't know his name, okay. man. That's why that, I'm that's, saying... Okay, you don't that's know. That's why I'm trying to share him with the black okay. mirror guy okay because i'm trying to use two different shows to explain who now he is. i understand that's why i was asking cool. i apologize no it's good clear. i thought you knew who the actor was no that's but he, he's like he's got this good little oh he's so good and he's so psychotic in that in the Gump, cumberbatch one and that's the cumberbatch one is the one with the martin freeman guy as well the blonde hair guy that's in 
I don't know, Avenger or something. One of those. Martin, you'd know him if you saw him anyway. He plays Watson. It's a really good retread of that. Okay. Of that whole thing. But he says the game is on. That's just, they changed a little bit. A which foot is, good. is way better. I love a foot. It's so good, and dude. Things being a foot at the Circle K is always more preferable than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, so, shit. That's great, dude. We're on 14, I think. Do, we are, are we really, Did we really get through these? Sadly, I'm so depressed. I hope I hope that people found it a little entertaining with our... I did. Our, I loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> it's so I'm having stupid. so much fun doing it's these, by the way. It's kind of stupid, even though it's Shakespeare. It's kind of dumb. This is I, Going in, I was like really not, not happy about this, but coming out, I'm smiling, man. <laughs> you make me smile. I love that we have this, and I hope that everyone who listens really understands how how deep our friendship goes. Oh, yeah. 28 fucking years, man. 28 fucking years. 28 Give fucking me years. Paw. All oh. right. Ooh, was that Team Wolf? No, that's oh, um, oh, Spaceballs. Spaceballs, that's what it was. I'm Mog. Um, I'm half man, half dog. I'm my own best friend. friend. That's that, another callback, my friend. But man, this is just so much fun. And with that one, I'm going to end it on this one is... Who's there? <laughs> Orange. I mean, banana. I mean, I get them all mixed up. So this Orange is a fun I didn't one. say banana? Knock, knock, who's there? Congrats, Shakespeare. You are the father of the knock-knock joke. While used to cheesy effect today, when uttered by the porter in Macbeth, Shakespeare is demonstrating a deft sense of cleverness. So this, That's crazy. I, this makes Can me you think, believe that shit? No. That's crazy. That we use that nowadays. That he started the knock-knock joke? Yeah. Fuck that. Knock-knock, who's there? So I've got... I've got one story to share about that. Please. Is it story time? Fuck did we yeah. do a story time today? I don't Not think on so. this one. I don't think Press we did. It. Press it. <sighs> but now I think about it, we may have done it. But my girlfriend, she teaches um, a certain class, certain kids, and they're amazing. But last year she was told a knock knock joke, and it goes a little something like this. Uh oh. Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana phone. Banana phone who? That, that was it. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana phone. That, that, was, that was it. Because the child didn't know the rest I, of the joke? I don't think there was a joke to know. I think it doesn't matter. It was cute as all get out. And I and I had to share it because when I saw this list and I saw Knock Knock Who's There, my girlfriend and I, and I, once again, Megzy, we'll call her Megzy, Megzy, shall we? Megzy, I hope you're out there. But um, Knock Knock Who's There, banana phone. The story she shares about her kids that she that she molds into upstanding human beings. It's a, it's Pretty a awesome. tough job, man. It's a tough fucking job, man. How would um, support your teachers, everybody? On a side note, right? Yeah, take care of your take care of your bartenders, your waiters, and your and your teachers. Please your tip and, your waiters and your teachers. And your teachers. <laughs> How would uh Woodermark say that joke? He go knock knock. Who's there over there? Yo, what are you going home? No. Are you knocking on my door, dude? No. How would he say banana? Oh, right, right. Okay, ready? Knock knock. Who's there? Banana fame. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love you. Let's pound it out, bro. Let's see if they can pick it up on the mic. Uh, it didn't work, but it's okay. We're pounding it out. We, we're we cool. Um, everybody, I hope you enjoyed our walk through William Shakespeare stuff. It's pretty surprising that there are that many phrases that we still use. There are probably 10 good ones that we probably have used this year. Yeah. It's crazy. Every time we tell a knock knock joke. Oh shit. Banana orange, phone. Aren't you glad I didn't say banana? Banana, 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 orange. <laughs> banana phone. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Love is blind. Love is blind. Can, and you know what? Yes. Keep them alive with kindness. Can we do that? Uh I like to change a little. I like to keep us all alive with kindness. Can we be friendly to each other? Let's not be dicks. If we make a mistake, let's own up to it. It's the quicker we own up to it. Hey, you know what? Honest mistake, everybody. I've cut off somebody before and realized, oh, shit. That's on me. So let's do it. Look inward, man. Amen, brother. Peace. Preach on, Billy Shakespeare. Billy Shaky. We're out of here, boys and girls. Peace out. Was my mic working at all this time? I don't even know. Yeah. I think it is. I'm just kidding.
Bye, boys and girls. <laughs> Deutsch, Czech, and Wudermark all say goodbye. Bye. Christopher says... Bye.